Hi there and welcome to a topic video looking at the Laffer curve. The Laffer curve analysis assumes that there is a relationship between the tax rate we apply, for example on income tax or VAT, and the total tax revenue collected measured here on the y-axis. Here's a, a conceptual Laffer curve. You don't necessarily need to draw tax rates of 0% and 100%. It's more realistic to think of tax rates within a positive range. So, for example, if we increase the tax rate from T1 to T2, starting at relatively low tax percentages, then we might expect to see an increase in the total tax revenue. And indeed, that's shown on the curve. Equally, tax rate T3 is at the peak of the Laffer curve. And uh, this might be considered the optimal tax rate if, and this is a key point, if the objective is to maximise total tax revenue. Of course, the government might have increased to introduce a tax for reasons other than the need to generate revenue to the exchequer. But if we move beyond T3, under certain circumstances, increasing the tax rate to T4, a relatively high tax rate, might actually cause a fall in total tax revenue, total tax collection. Of course, one of the implications of this is if we cut taxes from T4 to T3, then the total revenue from tax might actually go up. So why might tax revenues increase if, sorry, why might tax revenues fall if the tax rate increases? If we go from T4, uh, T3 to T4, why might uh, the total tax revenues actually decline? Well, there's all kind of various explanations for this, one of which is that if you increase the tax rate, there's a greater incentive for people and businesses to avoid taxation. Uh, you know, people have an incentive to employ a tax lawyer to make optimum use of their tax relief and tax allowances. Businesses may decide to provide all kinds of different ways to avoid paying taxation. There's also an incentive to evade taxation. Whilst tax avoidance is legal, tax evasion is illegal. And the classic example of this is when people earn an income, for example from a job, but don't declare it to the tax authorities, non-declaration of income and wealth. A third key reason is often linked to the labour market, that if we increase the tax rate, then there could be some disincentive effects for people either to take a job or to earn some extra income. And that might apply particularly to people at the top end of the labour market. But it can also be a factor when we think of the poverty trap for people at the bottom end, the lower end of the earnings scale. And a fourth possible explanation is that uh, there could be, in the medium to long term, some brain drain effects. If a country introduces a particularly high relative tax rate compared to uh, cl countries close by, for example, there might be some sort of depopulation impact as highly skilled, higher income taxpayers decide to move offshore or move to other countries in search of lower tax. The scale of this brain drain effect is often exaggerated by economists who actually favour lower taxes. It's important to be able to evaluate the Laffer curve concept. The Laffer curve idea is plausible, it's intuitive, but it often doesn't have much in the way of systematic um, econometric evidence behind it. So here are some evaluation points. Supporters of the Laffer curve are often those who actually fundamentally want lower taxes and higher incomes. Uh, in particular, they may have an enterprise agenda in mind. They want to get people to be enterprising in starting businesses and earning extra income. But one of the trade-offs of that is if you cut top rate taxes, you might end up with an increase in relative poverty or income inequality. There's also little strong evidence that the top rate of income tax is actually a major barrier to the inward migration of skilled, high earning people. Second point is that many people are on fixed hours or zeroing, zero hours contracts. So in reality, the tax rate applied on their income actually has little bearing on their work incentives and in particular the number of hours they choose to work. We also know that the tax rate is not the only factor affecting work incentives. We have to think in particular about the effect of the welfare system and how that interacts with, with uh, taxes to affect the incentives to, to earn extra income or take a job. 
Indeed, for some people, if you cut taxes, although in theory, in the Lafayette curve analysis, that might increase tax revenues, for some people, a tax cut will cause them to actually consume more leisure time instead of work. That's particularly the case if there's a backward-bending labour supply curve. In reality, the Laffer curve probably has stronger Keynesian foundations. Uh, if you cut taxes, if you cut income tax, for example, if you cut VAT, that increases people's real disposable incomes. They, they therefore have more money available to spend after tax, and that should feed through to higher consumption, increase in demand, and ultimately an increase in the tax revenues from a range of direct and indirect taxes. So the Laffer curve is an interesting theoretical idea. My advice to students is it's relevant to bring into the discussion, but uh, please don't assume the Laffer curve is a, is, a, is a manna from heaven and panacea for all economic ills. It's an interesting idea, but I think it's one that's worth criticising more than it is believing in.